uh, the Lord is gracious and the Lord has appointed you to come because He has a special blessing as a special word for each one of us. Not just us here, but everyone here. So we shall start this session and we want to invite our senior pastor, Daniel, to welcome all of you as well as to pray for us as we begin this session. Hi everyone, all well, welcome to the first hymn singing of the, this year. Welcome everybody. Um, now, uh, just do some housekeeping for now. Uh, because of the COVID situation, please keep a uh, two square meter rule. So, we, unless you are in the same family, otherwise you please just have at least one seat between you. Um, now, after the uh, meeting, we have refreshments. So again, um, please keep the, the social distancing, two square meters, and finish the refreshment quickly, and so that you can go home quickly, right? So we do this because of the uh, restrictions, and we hope everybody is safe and sound and enjoy this evening, right? So will you join me in prayer now before we start the meeting? Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful this evening that we can come together in this manner to worship you with the hymns beautiful, important part in our worship life. This morning we want to, this evening we want to commit everything that we do to you. And Lord, may you be enthroned in our worship. Father, even as we are worshipping, will you enjoy every moment of our worship? Lord, we pray for the spirit of worship to rest on the team and on the congregation that even as we sing together, we are singing from the Heart of our hearts, offer our praises and worship to the Most High. Lord, we want to commit this evening to you and thank you for all the brethren that have come all the way to here. Lord, let them enjoy the time together with you and with one another. We commit this meeting to you right from the start uh, to finish. Thank you for your blessings. Bless the time together, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As I was uh, preparing for this hymn sing uh, a couple of months ago, I felt impressed to share with you a very short exaltation on the importance of knowing who our God is. Since the fall of Adam and Eve, sin and evil entered the world. And the beautiful universe that God has created is being progressively corrupted. Humanity is fraught with all kinds of disasters and dangers. And as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Himself, the Bible predicted that there would be more disasters from the elements. Knowledge will expand exponentially. Today you just Google anything you want. You can get the knowledge. Unfortunately, evil in our world today also grew exponentially. But what is happening over the last five years attests to this very fact that I'm sharing with you. The last two years of the COVID-19 pandemic is a foretaste of what is to come. When Jesus Christ come, comes again, according to the prophecy in the book of Revelation, the impending disasters during that period is thousands of times more severe, more catastrophic than what we are experiencing today. Within the span of three and a half years, half the world's population, if you think about seven billion you're thinking about three and a half billion people would have been killed. And much of the vegetation, animal and sea life will be wiped out during this period of the Great Tribulation. The majority of people today is split with a great sense of despair and hopelessness. And Christians are not spared from it, isn't it? The brevity of life is more acutely felt today than any time in years past. 
At one moment, people are healthy, but the next moment, life can suddenly be snuffed out. During the last two years, thousands or even millions of people during the last two years of the COVID pandemic have died. In the midst of the present uncertain time, there is hope for us Christian. We are comforted that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. The Lord Almighty is sovereign. We can take comfort in that. And He is still in control of everything. Nothing that has happened, is happening, and will happen can talk the divine will and the purposes that God has for mankind and the world. He is our Heavenly Father. In tonight's hymn sing, we want to celebrate that our God is our refuge and our strength. He is El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty who protects. In Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, God says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not, be dis be not dismayed, for I am your God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 We are afflicted by all kinds of problems in every side. But as Christians who have the Lord, we are not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2 He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Our Heavenly Father will nurture us with His limitless provision. And more importantly, during this time, divine protection. Do not fear the virus. If God wants us to touch the virus, He will, but He will still protect us. So let us let us not have undue fear of the virus or anything that's going to trouble us. Psalm 23 beautifully projects the protections and provision that God affords His precious children. Yeah, I have a testimony on Psalm 23. 48 years ago, three months before our wedding, Victor and myself, we literally walked through the valley of the shadow of death. On the way home from Bible camp at Port Dixon, the van that we were traveling in somersaulted twice and landed on the grass verge. The entire accident probably take, took less than 10 seconds. Yet during the 10 seconds of unforeseen crisis, the Lord comforted me. I heard the clear, calm voice of the Lord. Reading the entire Psalm 23, all six verses, and, uh, and in, uh, even in King James Version, because I started King James that time, under normal circumstances, at our normal reading pace, the entire Psalm 23 would have taken 90 seconds to complete. During that time, despite the screams of other occupants of the van, I felt the perfect peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding. I felt indeed detached from the chaotic scene. It was so surreal. Thereafter, I was flung out of the van. How? Until today, I don't know. But surely it was God's intervention. His merciful loving hand had carried me out of the van before the roof of the van caved in. Had I been not taken out, I wouldn't be here today to testify of God's goodness. Where I was seated, the roof had caved in so badly that I would have been sliced to death. It was a miracle 
and is a miraculous deliverance by my loving Heavenly Father, our outside God. Praise the Lord. Psalm 33, the Lord's my shepherd. riches in glory. Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 32. It says, Therefore, do not be anxious. What you shall eat, drink or wear, our Heavenly Father knows all our needs. Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet God feeds them. Are you not one of more value than they? The hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow, was written by Sevilla D. Martin and the music composed by Charles H. Gabriel in 1905. The writer was inspired by the words of David in Psalms 32, 8. I will guide thee with mine eye. And Jesus in Matthew 10. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are more valuable than many sparrows. The size on the sparrow to be sung by Bob. I be this 
a Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, is tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears, though by the path he leadeth, but one step up His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because. I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him from care he says me free, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing, I sing because I'm free. For oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he Fired by the imaginary of the Song of Solomon, 2 verse 1, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys, 
Upon his reflection on this word, Charles declared he had found a friend in Jesus. He compared the beloved in Song of Solomon in Jesus as the lily of the valley. The lily of the valley symbolizes sweetness, purity, fruitfulness, humility, and healing qualities of Jesus Christ. Charles could see only in Jesus all he needed to be cleansed and made fully whole. He declared that Jesus was his comfort in sorrow and in trouble because Jesus has told him to roll every care on him for he cares. Jesus is indeed the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Mrs. Sivlan Martin was not feeling well. However, their nine-year-old son piped up at this point. Don't you think God will take care of her? With that, Mr. Martin went for his engagement. With the words uttered by her son, Mrs. Martin wrote the hymn, God will take care of you. And when Mr. Martin came home, Sivlan gave the lyrics of the hymn, the hymn, and within an hour, he composed the music to the hymn. Mr. Sivla Martin later also wrote the hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow, that Uncle Bob had sung for us earlier.
It is well with my soul. That's the next song. This hymn was written after many traumatic events that took place in Horatio G. Spafford's life. He had his wife, Anna, and five children. In 1871, his young son died of pneumonia, and in the same year, much of their business was lost in the great Chicago fire. Yet by the grace of God, their business was allowed to flourish once more. In 1873, Mrs. Spafford, with her four daughters, were traveling from the USA to Europe on a French ocean liner. Horatio, because of an unexpected business problem, could not join the family for the trip and had stayed behind in Chicago. After four days of sailing, the ocean liner collided with another ship and all aboard were in grave danger. Anna, with her four daughters, went to the deck and prayed that God would spare them or make them willing to endure whatever awaited them. Within 12 minutes, the ship sunk taking 226 passengers, including Anna's four daughters, with it. Anna was saved and landed in Cardiff, UK. From there, she telegraphed Horatio and accounted what had happened. The poignant phrase in the telegram was, saved alone. Horatio booked a passage on the next available ship to join his grieving wife. After four days of sailing, the captain of the ship called Horatio and told him that they were over the spot where his four daughters had gone down. During that journey to England, Horatio wrote the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Virginia and Terry will sing the first two verses for us.
Lord for such a beautiful and meaningful hymn, written out of sorrows and the hope and the comfort the family got in Christ is just tremendous. It is now open session. If you have the list of hymns that you can choose from, now is the time that you can choose. Shut up the hymn number, yes. 428. I need thee every hour. Slide number 109, Carol. 109428. I need thee every hour. Any Sherwood Hawks born in Pusik, New York on May 28. 1835 road, I need thee every hour and over 400 other hymns in her lifetime. 400 hymns, my goodness. She recounts how she wrote this hymn. On a bright June morning in 1872, she became so filled with the sense of the nearness of the Lord, she wondered how one could live without Christ. Either in joy or pain, these words were ushered into his, her mind. The thoughts at once taking full possession of me. I need thee every hour. Yes. In 428. Choice? Number one. Number one. 
beautiful song, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. This hymn is from the poem written by Henry Van Dyke in 1907. The theme was set to the very, very famous and common uh, song called Ode de Joy, melody of the final movement of Beethoven Symphony No. 9. The hymn portrays an optimistic of the progress of human history in the pre-World War I period. But when the war came, everything was really disappointing. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Contemporary Christian song, Michael Cart, fairly new person who wrote Christian song, and John Thompson, using direct quote from scripture as their inspiration, wrote it. It was also named one of the song of the century in 2001. How should I? We shall sing this song twice.
303. People need the law. Isn't it true for all the people in the world today, especially today, people need the law. This song was written by Greg Nelson in 1948 and Phil McHugh. The idea for this song emerged from a luncheon meeting in a Nashville, Tennessee restaurant. Matthew became aware of the pain in the eyes of their waitress. And he said to Nelson, People need the Lord, don't they? Nelson responded, Yes, people need the Lord. From that brief exchange came the idea for the song, which was sketched in outline during the remainder of the meal. It was subsequently recorded and became a popular song with soloists and in choir. People need the Lord. We need to stand for this.
the Lord to them. We have one choice before we have a fun time. Okay? Number what again? 92. 92. Love divine. Okay. Slide number 59. Number 92. This hymn was written by Charles Wesley, who had composed more than 6,000 hymns. Together with his brother John, was the founder of the Methodist movement. This hymn is one of Wesley's best known. It is also considered a prayer. In the prayer of the hymn, we are asking Jesus to enter our hearts, set our hearts free from sin, and make us a new creation in Him. This song has grown in popularity in around the early 20th century. The recent use of in 2011, wedding of Prince William and Catherine Middleton is a reminder of just how popular his hymn is. Love divine, all love excelling.
We are privileged to have Mona to administer a hint quiz. It's to test us how many hints we know and how are they related to some profession. It is a non-serious quiz, so it's just for fun to give us some relaxation. And Mona will administer the question. And uh, Michael and Yen will do the running of the mic. Whoever has the answer, please put up your hand. Don't answer yet until you get the mic. And whoever get, gets it right will get a chocolate bar. <laughs> I think we should have some fun. Uh, our God will love it. Okay. Um, every day over the news, we hear about weather. Okay. Uh, what is the, going to be the weather today and all that. Uh, so, what is the weatherman's favorite hymn? Drops keep falling on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's not a hymn. <laughs> Well, quite close, quite close. Anyone else yeah, on the quite close. Yeah, Judith? After Judith. Shower of blessing. Whoa, Whoa. yeah. Then it's shower of blessing. Very good. Okay, okay, at the back. Okay, back. Crown me with red, green crown. <laughs> ah, okay. Crown him with red crown. Very good. Contractor. What is the contractor's favorite here? Yes? Bind us together? Bind us together? <laughs> no, not really. Contractor. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor. Sewing, sewing. Judith, just now you mentioned something. Holy, holy. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, got so many holes. So holy, holy, holy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Michael. She did that for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Michael had no business this side. What happened? Yeah, okay. Okay. Answers to this question. What is the optometrist hymn? Two answers. Two possible answers. Yeah, two possible answers. Right at the back. <laughs> Selena again. Be down my vision. Yes, good one. Who can give another answer? Another one. Eyes on the sparrow. What is it? Sorry? His eye is on the sparrow. No. The, 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 the optician, if the optician tells you that your eyes is on the sparrow, you are. Yes, yes. Yes. Be down my fish. Feel my eyes. Huh? What? Feel my eyes. Feel my eyes. Not quite right. <laughs> I think I should be able to get it. Sorry? Ophthalmologists don't ask you to turn your eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Turn your eyes upon Jesus. No. You want to answer? Open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see. Yes. So we okay. have to yeah. <laughs> Which is quite funny. What is the gossip hymn? <laughs> a gossiper's hymn. <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. No. <laughs> quite fun, you know. Gossip, what do you do when you gossip? Pass it on. Pass it on! The ring is correct. Oh, the young people is having a yeah. list. Pass it on. Yeah. When you gossip, you always want to pass it on. Another one. The real estate agent, we had to say, yeah. What, what, what they will tell you when they want to try to sell you something. Yeah? What is, yeah? A mighty fortress is our Lord. A mighty fortress. <laughs> Where can I buy that? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Um, a few more, a couple more, then we will wrap it up. What is the uh, tax agent? Tax agent, IRS. IRS agent. <laughs> the tax department. Yeah. IRS. What is their hint? <laughs> What is the electrician's hymn? No electrician here. Yeah, any electrician here? What do electricians do? Huh? Only takes a spark. Only takes a spark. Only takes a spark. Only takes a Yes. Touch me, oh God. Touch me. <laughs> he touched me. He touched me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we come down to a few more hymns and then we will wrap this session. Anyone wants to have a choice? 345. Blessed Assurance. This famous hymn was composed by Fanny Crosby. She was blind at the age of six weeks. Was a lifelong Methodist who began composing hymns at the age of six and author of more than 8,000 gospel hymn texts. She drew her inspiration from her own faith. One day, a music composer, Phoebe Palmer Knapp, played a melody to Fanny Crosby and asked, What does this melody say to you? Crosby immediately replied that the tune said, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and proceeded to recite the entire first stanza of the now famous hymn. That was how this amazing thing came about. People are inspired by God. They walk with God. They are so close to God. And they can just compose things, Him so easily. Blessed Assurance 345. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to have the last two hymns. Yes? 58. This is my father's world. Was written by Mel B. Davenport and was published after his death in 1901. It was originally written as a poem containing 16 verses of four lines each. Franklin Shepherd set the poem to music in 1915 and selected three verses for the final hymn. This is a song written in 1901, number 58. written on the evening of George Madison's sister's marriage. He went blind while studying for the ministry, and his sister had been the one to care for him through the years. He was now 40, and his sister's marriage likely brought a fresh reminder of his own heartbreak. According to Madison, the hymn was the fruit of suffering, it was the quickest bit of work I ever did in my life. I had the impression rather of having it dictated to me by some inward voice than of working it out myself. So apparently he hears the word, the voice of the Lord to dictate to him this particular scene. I'm quite sure the whole work was completed in five minutes and it never received at my hand any retouching of correction. All the verses came like a day spring from on high. It's a beautiful hymn that came directly probably from the Lord Himself. 374 O oh, love that never 
Let Me Go. The first two verses will be sang by the duet Virginia and Terry.
I shall now call Yin to close us in prayer as well as to give thanks for the supper that we're going to have. You know, as we were just singing that last hymn, I was just looking it up and it, it, we find it in Psalms uh, 57 and I just, um, it's a, a Psalm of David and I'll just read three verses real quick if, if that's okay Dad? Um, yeah, sure. So um, the uh, verse 4 actually says, I'm in the midst of lions, I lie among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongue are sharp, are like sharp swords. And then it goes, be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be over all the earth. And then it goes, they spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. It, it's just, I just thought it was interesting that amongst peril and danger and distress and challenge, there was just right in the middle there, it just says, be exalted, O God, among the nations. You know, we, we, as Dad has said, we, we live in troubled times at the moment and just, you know, just looking at what's happening in maybe Russia and Ukraine at the moment, um, we're not taking sides, but we, I, I believe that even in peril and distress and challenge, God's name can still be exalted. So maybe we can just, you know, I'm, I'm going to pray and I might just spend a, just a little bit of time praying for Russia and Ukraine as well. And we just want to pray that God will be exalted. His name over all the earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Dear God, we just thank you that we can come together and just lift your name high. Only your name is worthy to be exalted over all the earth. We want to just remember your children right now in the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. And we know that there are people that are suffering. There are people that are crying out. There are people that are in distress. We pray that you give them peace. You give them comfort. You be their protection. You be their shield. And we pray above all that your name will be exalted over all the earth. Even amongst challenging times. Even amongst distress. Even amongst peril. Even like what King David has said. Your name is exalted. Be exalted, oh my God, over all the earth. Because you are a great, great God. Only you are good. Only you are right. And only you are worthy to be praised. We praise your name. In Jesus' name, oh, we want to bless the food as well, as we're going to share it tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to thank all of you who, despite the circumstances, still come here and share with us this precious time to worship and to lift up really the name of Jesus. And His name is truly, truly be exalted tonight amongst all of us. Thank you for coming. And as a reminder, uh, the supper is there, and as Pastor said, eat as fast as you can. <laughs> Don't get yourself choked. <laughs> and then we can actually see you the next time. Thank you so much for coming.